Robots, I think they're terrific, <laughs> um, but that's my personal view. I've just always been fascinated by the, um, the way in which the parts can move together and the complexity of the movements that you can produce by um, just a, a series of motors fastened together by a couple of pieces of steel. Um, something about the grace of them when they move and particularly when you get them moving together in a production environment, I, I don't know, it's just, I can sit and watch it for hours but I'm just a bit sad like that I suppose. They work 24-7, they are repeatable, relatively repeatable, reliable and relatively low cost now. Robots are uh, much cheaper than they were a few years ago and they are really commodity items now. I mean, that, that is unfortunately uh, the, the common view of robots that because they have been applied so successfully, successfully within an automotive environment that the problems have been solved. But the work that we're concentrating on here is where the parts and the structures that you're trying to assemble and work with are not well defined, that things are not exactly where you think they will be. So you have to put a lot more intelligence into the system. What we're trying to do now is, where previously robots have been used to replace unskilled and semi-skilled operations, we are now working on using them to replace skilled operations. We build, um, well, the, if you like, the correct words we use is large compliant structures using robots. Um, I prefer to think of them as being jellies in engineering terms. We're building large structures such as aircraft, fuse large as aircraft wings, large engine casings, which are made up of a lot of very uh, flexible, thin sheet parts. So when you start trying to assemble them, it's very difficult to get everything to line up properly, get everything in exactly the right place, because as soon as you handle the parts, they change in shape. Um, if you do a machining process on them, a drilling process, or for instance in the case of the engine structures, a welding process, they will change shape again. So your continual parts are continuously varying in their shape and position relative to each other, which makes it very difficult to automate the process using conventional methods such as those used in the automotive industry, where the parts are designed to be rigid and to fit together properly in an automated environment. With a tremendous amount of interest at the moment, aircraft are getting, um, in many cases, larger, more complex. Um, the, there is a shortage of skilled labour within the industry. Um, they need to control their costs because of the threats coming from the developing economies. So yes, tremendous amount of interest at the moment in trying to increase the amount of automation and also the increasing volumes. Aircraft, although we hear about the slowdown in Europe and America, if you look at the developing nations there is a tremendous demand there now for aircraft as their own civil aviation industry is beginning to expand. I know there are issues that people have about robots both in an industrial context about taking away jobs from people, uh, replacing skilled people. I think we have to be realistic in, in certainly in the economic situation that we're working under today that there is in many branches of engineering a skill shortage and there are a lot of pressures from lower cost labour and unless we can deploy robots to fill the skills gap and to reduce the cost in the product we are going to struggle as an economic uh, power in the future.